A young man named Zhang Sangwu thinks about the idea of having a substitute to handle all our tasks someone who could for example work out for us, make money and manage everything while he just enjoys the results. He clearly paints each picture, showing that this kind of life seems like a dream come true. Sangwu shares that he almost reached this lifestyle however he hasn't given up on that goal. Dressed in a combat uniform he talks about his tireless chase for a more comfortable life than anyone else. He admits it might seem strange to put in so much work just to enjoy simple comforts and he asks aren't we all looking for something like this? He orders his clones to fight and stresses that he isn't alone in his efforts after all, his special power is cloning. Jung Sangwoo finds himself completely caught up in a video game however, his mind is weighed down by many responsibilities like studying for his classes and making sure he eats well. Although these tasks feel heavy, he can't help but daydream about all the fun things that call to him. He imagines diving into more video games, exploring new places, hanging out with friends and even going on romantic adventures. These thoughts make him wonder about the limits of human focus why can people only do one thing at a time. This frustration leads to a wish for a different reality one, where he has two bodies to handle everything at once. Then, in a surprising twist, something amazing happens his body unexpectedly splits into two. This incredible event triggers a flashback that reveals the beginnings of this strange experience. The story shifts to Jiang Guk University, where all the students have come together for a big event. Among this crowd is Zhang Sangwu, who feels tired and he really wants an escape. As he stands there, he imagines having two bodies this would let him manage all his tasks while still finding time for fun. During this gathering, a man named Park Wantai introduces himself to the students. Park Wantai is known as a class hunter someone who is responsible for identifying and overseeing people's abilities. He explains that he manages the 10th Portal Awakening program, which is a government project designed to help people awaken their unique skills. This program requires people to be exposed to mana, a strange energy, making them awaken their powers by going through a portal. Park Wantai shares his sincere wish that every participant will safely go through their awakening process. However, with a sense of urgency and excitement, he calls the first group of students to step forward and start the program. A woman approaches Jiang Sangwu, who looks a bit nervous and asks if he is part of group 37, number 7. He confirms that he is however, she then needs to check his identity. Once she confirms it, she tells him to hand over all his gadgets and step into the portal in front of him. Feeling a wave of fear, Jiang Sangwu slowly steps into the portal. As he goes in, the system turns on, identifying him with a specific code and confirming that he is indeed an earthly user. Once his identity is confirmed, the system allows him to proceed and finishes his registration. And when he finally steps out of the portal, Zhang Sangwu feels dazed, wondering if he has lost consciousness. His head hurts because it feels like it could explode from the intense experience. Looking around, he questions if he is in a bunker. He also sees that the program seems to really drain other students who look very weak. Zhang Sangwu notices a girl with an amazing ability that catches the attention of two powerful groups, the Hell Guild and the Dongjing Guild. Both groups are really urging her to join their ranks. This situation brings up a strong feeling of envy in Zhang Sangwu, especially about her talent and the admiration she gets from others. Mr. Park comes over to Zhang Sangwu to offer his congratulations on his recent awakening, however, he also asks if Zhang Sangwu feels comfortable. Zhang Sangwu admits that he doesn't feel right, but Mr. I Park comforts him, saying that improvement is coming soon. He then asks if Zhang Sangwu has looked at his skills. After checking his status, Jung Sangwoo discovers, because of this revelation, that he has a cloning skill that activates with his thoughts, although he is still uncertain about the bigger effects of such a power. At first, Jung Sangwoo feels a deep sense of inadequacy, however, he realizes how important his new skill is. As he digs deeper into his abilities, he sees that his casting type allows him to create a clone that looks exactly like him by using energy. Jung Sangwoo keeps thinking about his skill, wondering if certain conditions control when he can use it, and if it might also work for everyday tasks. While he is caught up in these thoughts, Mr. Park interrupts him, asking if he has finished checking his status window. Jiang Sangwu says yes, but he mentions that his stats don't look very impressive. Mr. Park tells him not to be discouraged, because most beginners have similar stats and then he asks about his skill. Jiang Sangwu goes into detail about his cloning ability, which makes Mr. Park remember someone who had a skill for illusion cloning. This skill was mostly useless, because illusions can't physically interact with anything. Zhang Sangwu knows that his clone is much more than just an illusion. Park tells him that having a cloning ability is better than awakening without any skills at all this is an important difference. He suggests that he should show it to the officials so they can evaluate it properly. However, Zhang Sangwu expresses a desire to go home, asking for an exit because he feels really overwhelmed from the officials. Park questions if he has met the exploring troops and tells him that he has to finish the registration scanning before he can go back through the portal. 
Zhang Sangwu manages his registration process successfully, getting an identification bracelet that captures his awakened registration form. As he heads home, he can't help but stare at the bracelet, filled with curiosity and thought about his new skill. Once at home, Zhang Sangwu becomes more frustrated as he checks his game status. He notices that the number of players in the game seems to be shrinking, which worries him. He starts to think about whether he should switch to a different game. This thinking makes him consider his financial situation because of his tuition fees and monthly rent. He understands that he might need to find a part-time job to pay his bills. In his annoyance, he wishes someone else could handle his duties. However, he suddenly remembers his cloning skill. Excited to try it out, he decides to give it a go. Focusing intently, he calls forth his clone to his astonishment. A perfect replica of himself appears, standing right in front of him. Zhang Sangwu is surprised because he sees a copy of himself. After recognizing the huge potential of this new ability, he heals both excitement and fear. However, the consequences of such power are intimidating and he knows he must be careful. Although he has done something amazing, the responsibility that comes with it hangs heavily on his mind. Zhang Sangwu calls forth his clone and is shocked to see an exact copy of himself naked of all things right in front of him. Amazed, he asks, are you really a clone? The clone simply answers yes. Curious about this, Zhang Sangwu wonders if he can touch him and the clone assures him that it's okay. Feeling a bit awkward, Zhang Sangwu reaches out and realizes that his clone has a real, physical body, it's not just an illusion. With suddenly aware of the clone's lack of clothes, Zhang Sangwu quickly tells him to put on some clothes. After the clone gets dressed, Zhang Sangwu starts to explore what he can do with this new ability. He asks the clone if he just needs to give commands for him to act and the clone nods to confirm this. As they interact more, Zhang Sangwu finds out, however, that he doesn't even have to speak his commands, the clone can respond directly to his thoughts. However, as he gives more tasks, Zhang Sangwu notices something important, the clone's stamina mirrors his own. After a bunch of commands, the clone appears tired just like Zhang Sangwu would feel after pushing himself. This discovery shows Zhang Sangwu that, although his cloning skill is really useful, it isn't without limits his clone feels the same physical endurance and tiredness as he does. Zhang Sangwu looks at a text message from his friend Zhang Do on his phone, Asking about the type of skill he has gained, Yang Do brags about having gotten 200 skills and keeps pushing Sangwu for a reply. Feeling unsure, Sangwu answers, saying that he doesn't know yet. Yang Do quickly responds, asking if Sangwu has gotten something useless and pressing him to share his thoughts. Reluctantly, Sangwu admits that he actually has. Yang Do laughs at this and jokes that Sangwu probably has a lying down skill, since he is always stuck at home. He says that no one can help him with that suggesting that Sang Wu should have been more active like him to get a better skill. However, even though Sang Wu sees Yang Do as just a talkative annoyance, he mutters a curse under his breath while looking at his phone. After finishing the chat with Jiang Do, Sang Wu shifts his focus back to his own situation. He checks his stamina level and finds, to his surprise, that it has gone up by 0.001. Zhang Sang Wu's clone is engaged in physical activity by running which catches the interest of two people from Jiang Guk University. They talk about how they've seen him running every day and wonder if he collapses in those clothes, completely unaware that he is, in fact, a clone. After a while, Zhang Sangwu's clone sits on a bench to rest. A woman comes up to him and offers a drink while commenting on how intense his workout is. However, he suddenly runs away, leaving her to think about whether he might be an introvert. At the same time, the real Zhang Sangwu, who looks fit because of the hard work of his clone, checks his weight and thinks about how he eats twice as much food as he did when he was hungry. Still, he has managed to lose 20 pounds this month. He wonders how it is possible that he hasn't put in much effort, but his body gets more toned each day and he even feels a slight increase in height. After getting an update on his stamina, endurance and relaxation levels, Zhang Sangwu realizes that it is true what they say skills often show a person's inner desires. Zhang Sangwu thinks about his new cloning ability and sees many interesting things. He realizes that the pain and tiredness his clone feels do not affect him at all. It's surprising to him that the clone will just disappear if it gets hurt or uses too much energy. The clone copies his exact appearance whenever his body changes. Additionally, he can give orders just by thinking about them, even if he is far away. However, he also knows that his clone can't make another clone, which stops the chance for an endless number of clones to be created. Driven by an endless curiosity to explore his abilities, Zhang Sangwu looks through the Hunter Wiki. He thinks about how he never imagined having such a remarkable skill. As he digs deeper into his research, he finds out that his clone can train non-stop without any breaks, following his commands until it hits its physical limits. This discovery shows how he could boost his stats so quickly. He starts to wonder how much more he could improve if he trained alongside his clone, imagining the possibility of gaining 78 stat points. While looking at a flyer for tough body gym, 
Zhang Sangwu comes to a smart conclusion. He decides to take charge, planning and organizing, while his clone will be his physical extension, doing the training and other tasks. However, he knows that this teamwork could lead to great results although he has to stay alert for any unexpected challenges. Jiang Sangwu looks at his account balance to his disappointment and finds out he only has 123,801. He realizes he doesn't have enough money for registration fees and remembers the large sum he has spent on food. Because of this, he decides he needs to get a part-time job. He searches online for construction jobs, thinking that this will help him get in shape and earn money at the same time. He finds a few job options and knows he has to do the work by himself at first. However, his clone can't really grasp the process unless he experiences it firsthand at least once. After thinking it over, Zhang Sangwu decides to go for a part-time delivery job instead. He reaches out to the person in charge of hiring and the man tells him there won't be an interview, he just needs to start working. When asked about his availability, Zhang Sangwu replies that he can begin tomorrow. However, the man then asks if he is free today telling him to come to the logistics center by 6.30 p.m. if he can. Zhang Sangwu agrees, sensing the urgency in the man's voice. He wonders if the company is short on workers, but he realizes that this situation could actually be good for him, and Zhang Sangwu arrived at the logistics center with his clone who was, notably wearing a nose mask and a face cap to hide his identity. The clone followed closely behind obediently. Sangwu knew he couldn't tell anyone about his clone, because he feared it might complicate things a lot. Instead, he took the time to brief the clone, telling him to use the name Jiang De while they were at work. He then reviewed the center's rules and expectations. When he entered the building, Sang Wu was surprised by its impressive size and complexity. He felt confused about where to go next. Just then, a familiar face appeared, Mr. Diokshul, his former secondary school teacher. At first, Diokshul did not recognize Sang Wu, however, with a warm smile, he reached out to shake Sang Wu's hand and said, Have you lost a lot of weight? Startled by the unexpected situation, Sang Wu quickly replied with a hint of anxiety, I'm here with my friend for a job, Mr. Diokshul, who had a smile that never faded, gave them directions. Although Sang Wu felt a bit lost, he thanked Mr. Diokshul and started to find his way through the large building. Nervousness began to wrap around him as he thought about the tasks ahead, however. His clone, Zhang Do, was there to calm him down. Don't worry, I'm not nervous, he said confidently, encouraged by his clone's calmness, Sang Wu took a deep breath and led the way to the office, ready to face whatever challenges came his way. Exhausted from the hard work, Zhang Sang Wu lay on the ground, feeling both deflated and frustrated. The task seemed endless, he wondered if the other workers had some special technique for managing all the heavy lifting. Sang Wu regretted not letting his clone, Zhang Do, handle the job by himself, especially because the clone was doing quite well without him. During their break, Diok Chil came over with drinks and food for both Sang Wu and his clone. He noticed how hard Jiang Do was working without saying a word and asked about the clone's name. Calmly, his clone replied, Kim Jiang Do, to which Diok Chil said it was a very manly name. Diok Chil then asked Sang Wu if he was all right, pointing out that it seemed like this was his first time doing such a task. Sang Wu admitted that the job was indeed tiring. Diok Chil praised their perseverance, mentioning that most people would leave during breaks when the work gets tough. Sang Wu thought about this and realized that, although it was tempting to quit, his need to keep his bank account in check prevented him from doing so. A clone quickly starts to eat the food and drinks that Dae Chil has given him. Turning to Zhang Sangwu, Diok Chil asks which university he got accepted into. Sangwu replies kind of modestly that he went to Jiang Guk University. Although he tries to downplay the school's reputation, saying it isn't that impressive, Dae Chil shows hope for his daughter to get into a place like that and then praises the university. Sangwu reassures him, explaining that he wasn't really good at studying either, however, he got into the university because of special admission rules and some licenses. Because of this, Diok Chil suggests a part-time tutoring job for Sang Wu to help his daughter, seeing it as a chance that could benefit both of them. Thinking about his small account balance, Zhang Sang Wu asks if he will need to teach every subject. Diok Chil confirms that this is true, mentioning that his daughter who has a hard time with school. He offers to pay 51 each time Sang Wu helps his daughter for two hours one to two times a week. Diok Chil presents what seems like a good deal. Sang Wu, seeing this as a nice chance, agrees to take the job. Di Chil Sil says he will talk to his daughter after work and then get back to Sang Wu. As he stretches his tired body, Sang Wu hopes the tutoring sessions will be useful and checks his stats. However, when he decides to grab a bite before going back to work, he finds that his clone has eaten all the food. Frustrated, Sang Wu calls his clone a bastard. The next day, Zhang Sang Wu wakes up feeling a deep soreness all over his body. He realizes with some frustration that he is not in good enough shape to keep managing his part-time job on his own. So he decides to give this responsibility to his clone as number one so to speak from then on. 
When he checks the clone's endurance status, he sees that it must have been working really hard, which makes him think about making the clone disappear and then bringing it back to reset its condition. However, he remembers that if he does that, the clone's stuff would fall to the ground. This leads him to simply tell the clone to go home in his mind and eat until it feels full. When the clone gets back to their shared place, Sangwoo tells it to clean up and change clothes, which the clone does right away. After that, Sangwoo uses a needle to poke the clone's hand to help it heal, saying that if he were to send the clone away, it would just break apart because it isn't really alive. He asks the clone if it feels pain and praises it for putting up with the hurt while he cleans up the blood. Sangwoo thinks about when he will get the regeneration stat and decides to do some research on the Hunter Wiki. He wonders if he can meet the required conditions over the course of a month, however, he feels nervous about worsening the injury too much. Although he is determined, this anxiety makes it difficult for him to focus. Instead of taking a more careful approach, he chooses to engage in the regeneration process more frequently to reduce possible risks. Jong Sangwoo tells his clone to eat ramen whenever he feels hungry and stresses the importance of exercising regularly. Others, he gives his spare mobile phone which he mostly uses for gaming to the clone and tells him to take it to work if he needs it. After this exchange, Sangwoo heads to the gym. Using a flyer's information, he manages to get there. But suddenly, he is hugged from behind by Kim Yeong-do, annoyed by this unexpected embrace. Sangwoo insists that Jiang do should remove his hands, especially since it's warm outside. Yang do noticing Sangwoo's significant weight loss, expresses his surprise and says he can hardly recognize him. He then asks about how Sangwoo achieved this transformation. Jong Sangwoo explains that he has been working out consistently and is going to the gym. After hearing this, Gyeongdo becomes interested in joining him. Sangwoo, noticing Jiangdo's extra body mass, agrees to let him come along. However, he adds a comment about the extra fat. Here's Jiangdo quickly counters this assertion. He claims that what Sangwoo sees is actually muscle, not fat. When Jiangdo asks for the name of the gym, Sangwoo tells him it's called Tough Body. So Jiangdo insists that Tough Body has a good reputation. However, Sangwoo brushes off this idea, stating that there's nothing particularly special about the gym, except for its high fees. It is only later after some thinking that Sangwoo realizes Jiang Do was referring to the trainer of the gym, not the gym itself. When Jiang Sangwoo and Jiang Do step into the gym, they see a group of strong men working out while the trainer who is sitting at a desk eats his meal. The vibe of the gym seems perfect for Sangwoo, who thinks the atmosphere is just right. Then, as the trainer looks up from his food, he stands and warmly greets them. He apologizes for eating and explains that they are on their lunch break right now. After that, he asks if this is their first time visiting the gym. Jiang Sangwoo says yes, expressing his wish to sign up. The trainer then shares a special offer, a three-month membership for 160,000 won. Sangwoo, happy with the deal, requests the trainer's help in checking his posture on each machine. He explains that, although his clone will be doing the exercises, it's important to make sure he has the right form. Afterward, the trainer helps Sangwoo finish the payment and gives him a tour of the machines, explaining how they work and making sure Sangwoo feels comfortable with everything. The trainer looks closely at Zhang Sangwoo's posture and gives him a thumbs up which shows he approves while noting that his form is really good. He tells Sangwoo to push hard on the incline bench press, stressing that he needs to do it both vigorously and quickly. When Sangwoo starts the exercise, the people in the gym watch with great interest. Yangdo, who is also there, begins to attract attention because of his impressive strength. This catches the trainer's eye, making him ask if Jiang Dao has been working out for a long time. Maybe feeling proud, but still trying to be humble, Jiang Do says that this is actually his first time working out. The trainer is surprised by Jiang Do's amazing strength and asks him about his strength stat. Jiang Do modestly mentions that his stat is around 2.1. The trainer, still shocked, raises an eyebrow at Jiang Do's unexpected strength and Jiang Do's humble answer just makes everyone admire him even more. Jiang Sangwoo watches Jiang Do and feels a twinge of envy about his amazing strength. He thinks maybe correctly that the strength Jiang Do mentioned must link to a specific skill or stat. This thought makes Sang Wu wonder how powerful other well-known hunters must be after all. If just a small boost in strength has such a noticeable effect, the abilities of others could be incredible. This realization explains why people are so fascinated and talk a lot about hunters they have extraordinary skills that set them apart from everyone else. As Sang Wu gets lost in his thoughts, his phone suddenly rings. It's Mr. Diokshil, asking if Sang Wu has gotten home safely. Diakchul mentions that he talked to his daughter about the tutoring plan. He then asks a question, can Sangwoo come over to his house? He wants to discuss something in person. Sangwoo agrees, saying he will get there as soon as he can. He hangs up and prepares to leave, feeling a mix of curiosity and excitement about the meeting ahead. And while on the way to Mr. Diokchul's house, Jong Sangwoo thinks about his last trip to the gym and feels irritated about Jayo not registering, even though he is clearly strong. In a quick moment of anger, he mutters under his breath, calling Jiang Do a bastard for not finishing the registration process. 
However, even with this irritation, Sangwoo finds a silver lining he feels relieved at the idea that he won't have to worry about sending his clone to the gym anymore. As he gets closer to Mr. Deokchil's place, his mind keeps going back to everything that happened that day. He arrives at the door, ready for the upcoming talk. But while he stands outside, he hears raised voices and chaos coming from inside the house. The sounds of an intense argument make him hesitate and he feels a bit uneasy about what could be going on behind that door. Meanwhile, Heian, Mr. Deokchil's daughter, feels a wave of frustration as she confronts her father. Dad, you can't just make decisions like this without consulting me first, she says, her voice full of exasperation. I need you to tell Zhang Sangwu not to come, I don't want him here, Mr. Deokchil, already halfway out the door, shot a glance at his daughter that was filled with both irritation and concern. I'm heading to work now, he said abruptly. If you don't want Zhang Sangwu coming over, you can tell him yourself, however, before Heian could say anything, Mr. Deokchil quickly turned to leave. In his rush, he swung the door a little too hard, and to his surprise, he ended up bumping into Zhang Sangwu, who had just arrived and was standing right outside this was surprising. The door hit him, leading to a brief moment of awkwardness and shock.